Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to the channel and a video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Something a little bit different today and that this video is not actually exclusive to Microsoft Flight Simulator itself. However, lots of people have contacted me over the last week or so asking me to have a look at a program that's been around for a while, but we've never featured it on this channel before. And I know that pretty much all of you will be interested in this just because the one thing that we're all looking for, particularly in Microsoft Flight Simulator because it's such a high demanding program, and that is better frame rates. Yes, the ability to have a really smooth simulator experience and none of that micro stuttering or anything like that, which is very, very important, particularly if you're flying in VR, as of course you need a smooth, stable set of frame rates for that so that it doesn't cause any sort of motion sickness. Now, the beauty of Microsoft Flight Simulator is, of course, that lots of developers are now really pushing the boundaries with the kind of detail that they can get out of their sceneries and aircraft developers, of course, making their aircraft incredibly, incredibly detailed. And that means that there is a big load on your PC's resources. So frame rates sometimes tend to suffer, especially when you start throwing in things like lots of add-ons such as VATSIM traffic ground vehicles, all that kind of stuff. So is there a way that we can still get all that and improve our frames? Well, the answer might just be in the form of a small little program, which is payware, not expensive, costs about six, seven pounds. And that is a piece of software called lossless scaling. Now, unfortunately, the only downside to getting this program is that you must purchase it via Steam. So yes, you do need a Steam account and Steam installed on your PC if you haven't done so already. But that doesn't, however, mean that you will have to have purchased Microsoft Flight Simulator through Steam. It, in fact, this program doesn't care whether you're flying Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, or playing a completely different kind of game. Because, in fact, it doesn't interact with your game or your simulator or any application. In fact, all it does is affect the frames that are going to be displayed to you on the screen, regardless of what program it is that you're running. So it is not like the frame gen mod that people have been using for Microsoft Flight Simulator, completely separate to that. Then, because it doesn't care what program you are running, it doesn't matter whether you're using DX11 or DX12, and it works with all graphics cards. Now, although you do need Steam to be able to download the program, Steam doesn't have to be running whilst you use the program. Unfortunately, though, you can't uninstall Steam after you have installed lossless scaling because that is a requirement. So it's a very simple program. This is the interface when you launch it. We'll go through these settings in a few moments. However, the thing with this is as well that you don't need to have this sort of running before you start the simulator or there's no set time to start it because as I said earlier, it doesn't actually interact with any application. It just provides more frames to your PC's monitor when it is running. So let's fire up the simulator and put it under a bit of pressure. My favorite place to do that is Inibuild's JFK Airport. Fantastic scenery. There is a link to that there on screen if you wish to go and purchase that. Doing so also supports the channel. So thank you if you go ahead and do that. But this with FSLTL traffic on, as you can see, is giving me quite low frame rates. I've also put a bit of weather in there as well. So as you can see, we're looking at about 17, 18, 19 FPS. Sometimes dropping as low as 15. Jumping into the Phoenix A320 then here in New York, you'll see that as I pan the screen around, we're looking at around 24, 25 FPS. I suppose it's not too bad given the circumstances, but it would be nice to have a smoother screen. So let's take a look at what lossless scanning can do if we turn it on. 
Now, when you turn the program on, you have five seconds to select the program that you want to apply the app to, and then it will show you that with the frame generator incorporated. One thing I then struggled to do was actually get my Streamlabs to record this. Even using screen capture mode, it didn't actually like to record the lossless scaling representation of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So in fact, the only way I could show you the unbelievable difference between the two is to use my phone and video both screens side by side. So the one on the left is Microsoft Flight Simulator as it is. The one on the right, however, is lossless scaling's representation of it. And as I move around, I'm certain even with my phone camera, you will be able to see just how big a difference this is making. So as I pan the camera around from left to right, it's very easy to see, particularly if I look closer towards the ground. The right hand side is lossless scaling, adding in extra frames to fill in those gaps. And you can see that compared to the live Microsoft Flight Simulator on the left hand side, it looks completely smooth. In fact, it looks like two different PCs are running it, one more powerful than the other. Now, if you turn on the FPS counter within the lossless scaling app, you will see there's some numbers there in the top left hand corner of the right hand screen. And if I just try and zoom into those for you, the number on the left is the actual FPS that Microsoft Flight Simulator is giving us. The number on the right is the lossless scaling frame rate. And look at the difference between the two. We've pretty much got almost three times as much FPS given to us. And that is why the right-hand side looks silky smooth compared to our left-hand screen. Now, I have seen different pieces of software before and different settings you can use to improve your FPS. FPS. But one of the things that I did want to check out was what is the actual graphics quality like? Are we going to lose any detail and are things going to appear a little bit blurry? Well, here we are sat inside the Phoenix A320. And again, you can just see how smooth that is on the right compared to how uh, jerky that is on the left hand side. And the frame rates again inside the, uh, the Phoenix, which is quite a substantial aircraft. Um, working beautifully. Now, this is lossless scaling, and you can see that we don't lose any detail on the screens, the text, the texture, anything like that. It is absolutely spot on. Now, as most of you know, I'm not particularly a very tech kind of guy. So in terms of explaining what all of these individual systems do, um, that's probably not down to me to explain them. But what I will do is go through and show you the setup that I've got for these to get the results that we've just seen on screen. I have been through and tested all of these and uh, read through sort of the manual and things. So hopefully these settings will work for you. However, every single PC is different, so you might need to go through and tweak certain things. And I'd love to hear what your settings are for uh, this lossless scaling app if you're using it. So please do leave a comment down below that may go towards helping others as well. The results you've just seen on screen then. First of all, uh, we leave the scaling mode to auto and the aspect ratio as well, rather than to full screen. Scaling type is left off as that's not what we're using this product for. We're using this for frame generation and nothing else. So there's two different options. Well, actually there's three. There's off, there's 2.1 and there's 1.1. 1.1 I found created more lag as you were sort of panning around and looking around the, uh, the view of the simulator. So 2.1 was the one that gave us the really smooth momentum and higher frame rate. So that was what I was using. So then there are two modes available. There's times two and there's times three. And essentially what each of these does is for every frame that Microsoft Flight Simulator is giving you, it will then insert one extra frame between the two frames that Microsoft Flight Simulator is giving you. It means that it basically gives you one extra frame for every frame that you see. 
times three does, well, as it sounds like, that will give you two extra frames for every frame that you see. So essentially, you're getting three frames to one or two frames to one. Now, a lot of people have apparently said that times two is the better option. Times three, though, is what you saw on screen with those really increased frame rates. And the only difference I could find between the two is, yes, three did give me slightly, well, actually, no, three gave me much better performance in terms of frame rates, but there was just sometimes a little bit of a lag compared to what Microsoft Flight Simulator is displaying and what the lossless scaling representation is displaying. So to get a nice balance, people may find that times two is the way forward. And times two, however, still gives you usually at least double, if not sometimes triple, the frame rates that you would normally get. So this is something that you can change on the fly as well. So it's just whichever setting you think works for you. There's a performance option as well that basically just means that it's not going to use quite as much of your PC's power in order to do its thing, so you're not going to get quite as much extra frames, um, but I don't need that on as this is usually for those with really uh, lower or older systems. We've then got clip cursor, adjust cursor speed, high cursor, I've obviously just left all those off. A scaled cursor, I did leave that on as I found it did work just a little nicer and that's just in terms of the cursor that you can actually see on the scaled version of the Sims screen when, uh, when obviously moving the mouse around. We've then got rendering and we've got virtual sync, HDR support, allow tearing. Definitely don't turn that one on because the sim looks awful, or at least it did on my system when that was turned on. And the draw FPS, that was the little counter you saw in uh, the top corner of the screen showing you the original frame rates and what the new frame rates are. Now, the different captures that are available, there are three options. GDI is for older systems. WGC, no idea what that is but it didn't work for me at all. Uh, DXGI is the one that we used. Then GPU and display. Prefer GPU if you've got more than one. Uh, I definitely don't have more than one. Why, why it's telling me I've got two that I'm not, uh, not entirely sure. But I think it's something to do with the fact that I actually have two monitors. Um, so obviously I just selected the first one and then the out put display, that would be screen one, that one's screen two. Uh, that only will come into play, of course, if you've got more than one monitor. If you have, of course, multi-display mode, because then it's obviously only affecting one. You also then have the option of windowed mode. Now, VRR support, don't actually know what this does and couldn't find anything about it in the manual. I don't know if it's for virtual reality headsets. Now, I don't actually have one of these. So what I would love to hear is anyone who has tried to use the lossless scaling app with virtual reality to see if it works, if it helps, and of course, what settings you found worked for that. Because with virtual reality headsets, you really do need a good, smooth simulator. Otherwise, I know it can cause motion sickness. So very interested to hear how people would find this working in VR. So guys, they are a very simple program that seems to work beautifully. The downsides that I've got with this program, one, it's only available on Steam, meaning you do have to have Steam installed and everything that goes with it, and the fact that I can't, for the life of me, get my Streamlabs to actually display the lossless scaling version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if anyone out there actually knows how I could potentially do that, then obviously we'll use this on our live streams as well and my future videos and it seems that the performance will look fantastic compared to normal. I would love to hear from you guys what you think about this app. Is it worth the small fee in order to get the kind of boosts that we saw earlier on in the video? Up to three times the FPS when it comes to even the highest airport detail and loads with extra traffic and GSX, all of those things all running, which I just found to be, well, completely incredible. So yeah, please definitely let me know how you found this program, if you've used it, and of course, 
share your settings as well with the community so you might be able to help other people out as well as maybe myself don't forget as well that we have a special discount code for those of you who are purchasing items via the contrail store one of our channel partners here is the discount code this is a one-time use code only so it will get you 10 percent off so always worth using this when you're purchasing multiple items in order to gain the biggest savings thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like and of course if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and of course our live streamed flights thanks for watching i'll see you all again next time bye bye